Hi, it's Russ from Studio One Expert. And I want to talk about punching in, which has nothing to do with getting to work on time or hurting someone. It's to do with how you can get your recordings to drop in automatically during a predetermined part of the song. So if you haven't got three arms, and most of us haven't, then this is a really cool way of being able to do overdubs and fixing stuff if you're on your own in the studio. It's called automatic punch in, and we're going to do it now. So what would happen historically, with tape machines in, in the good old days of studios, is that uh, the artist would be in the studio and, and the engineer would be there. And if they had to fix a part, the tape would be running and then at the predetermined time, they'd hit the record button and drop the part in and then hit the play button again afterwards or the record button, depending on how the machine worked, and pull it back out again. Now, the, in the modern world of DAWs in Studio One, you can do that automatically. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So what you want to do is do some setup first. So what I'd like to do is drop a guitar solo into this area of the song. So I'm going to, I'm going to come up here first and I'm going to set my in and out point between 9 and 13. That's where it's going to go. I want to come down here as well then. I want to turn the loop record off this time. I want to make sure that this little icon is switched on, which means now if I go to record from, let's say, bar eight, if I press record, it's not recording, but it'll start now. And it'll start wherever I set this marker at the top. Now you're probably asking, why did it not start recording the minute I hit record? Well, that's because of how we've set it. It's automatically punching in and out. So it's it's coming to this point and that point. Now it's determined by that setting there between 9 and 13. So let's put a bit of guitar down. I'm going to go from bar 7, a couple of bars first, and we'll put it in record. And it stops again. So it's dropped that in. Now, interestingly enough, I got this wrong at the start. So I'd like to do these first two bars. Now, another cool feature is if uh, you hear, heard I started playing before the drop in. Now, there's a cool feature that you'll see in another video, which we've done called Never Lose an Idea Again. And if you come to the settings in preferences here, it's worth coming into advanced audio pre-record audio input and I've put one minute in there it can be anything you want it could be 10 seconds what that means is that even if I didn't hit record at that point all the stuff I did before there see is there I can pull it back out so if you're early into a take you can go back and get it so you need to make sure that's turned on let me show you what happens if it's turned off so I'll turn that off press OK do it again stop that now if we try and pull that out now there's nothing because we haven't got the pre-record set so it's well worth coming in here advanced audio to tick that box as I say I've got one minute just in case I have an idea that I didn't catch record on so let's undo that now and I'm going to do that take again and then we're going to do a second drop in afterwards now it's a really important feature that's in studio one and actually is in most doors and it should be an industry standard and that's a thing called input monitoring it's here. Now what input monitoring allows me to do is if I turn it on, if I turn it off, it stopped sounding. Now that's a pain in the ass if you're trying to do drop-ins because you actually want to hear the original as well as the recorded part. And if I played this now, put it in record, I can't hear my guitar, you might hear it down my microphone. It won't play until I go. So we want input monitoring because it needs to work so that when I drop in, I can actually hear the guitar before and after. And the great thing is as well, when you've got input monitoring work, you listen, listen to what happens. So I can hear the original and the one I've played now. That's really important too, because I need to hear what I've played before and what I'm gonna play after. So I'm gonna drop in now between nine and 11 because I've got that a bit whack. So I'm going to come back here. So it's going to record the first part, then drop back out and leave that bit there. So let's put that in record again now. And you hear the, the new one comes in again. Now that works both ways. So what we could have done, there's a bit here as well. So this time I'm going to move this. I'm going to move that down to the back end of the track 
start at 11 and put it out to 13. So I'll hear the first part I've played and then we'll drop in for the second part. So let's play that again. But still hear my original guitar because I've been put monitoring. So there we got me drop in now. So let's have a listen to that all now. I'm going to get those early notes. I think there's a part there as well I want to bring in. There. Let's have a listen to that now. And the final thing I'd do then is I'd mark both parts and press the X key, which has now given me a crossfade here. So there we are, that's doing auto punching with Studio One. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.